Hi everyone, thank you very much for joining me today. I'm going to go through how to install GNS3 and then add a router to that. Uh, so a really simple, straightforward, quick and easy thing to do. Um, so in order to get GNS3, you need to go to gns3.com, click on the free download button, and um, you need to um, create a user ID and log on, uh, enable to access the download page. Uh, but once you've created that, you'll be able to download the software and um, I've I've already got that downloaded so I've got that here GNS3 all in one and it's for the Windows version so if you've got a Linux operating system like Ubuntu or, or any other Linux uh, popular ones you can get the, the Linux version as well um, the process for that is slightly different but I'm only going to go through the Windows one so once you've got that downloaded you just double click that uh, let's bring that down um, you also allow access so what you also need is is some iOS as well so you need some Cisco iOS without without that iOS you can't uh, get GNS3 to run uh, but if you look on Google I'm sure you can download it so I've got a 7200 uh, quite a latest one let out download here so please don't ask me for uh, links or downloads to these um, you're not allowed to share that but uh, if you look on Google by all means you I'm sure you'll find it um, so anyway, so if you carry on, so this uh, once you double click the GNS3 all-in-one, um, this setup page comes up, you click on next, click on agree, uh, click on next, and you pretty much need to download all of these um, components. Uh, you could leave out Wireshark and SolarWinds, um, but both of those are pretty useful, especially the Wireshark. Um, you know, you can do packet traces, and, and it's, you know, important to be able to view what's going on so you you can do like deep packet inspection of, of your network if you want to use Wireshark. SolarWinds, uh, I've left that one out because I'm not too keen on it. I, I like using other applications but it's, again it's down to you. But SolarWinds has different applications like logging servers, D uh, TFTP servers uh, and various other apps for monitoring and management. Uh, so you can download that if you want. But everything else you must have, you must leave all this uh, on as default um, otherwise your GNS3 will not work um, so you basically you click next to that and then click install um, once you click install you have to accept um, so it's saying I've already got it installed because I've, I've already previously installed it just say OK to that and it will, it will still install it agree that um, and basically install again so uh, it's finished the WinP cap now it's doing the Wireshark, um, and then it it takes a, f a while to install all the all the applications. Um, so I'm going to pause the video there for a minute. Okay, so we're back again. Um, that's installed. Unfortunately, it cleared the screen, uh, but um, what you will get is is an icon on your desktop, um, and you double click the icon, and it kicks off the GNS3. Uh, and there we go. So this is. I'm just going to reduce that slightly. Uh, cancel that. So you reduce that slightly. So this is this is the page that it comes up with, um, and I, I actually don't like this one. I prefer the old version. So um, what you need to do is you just go into Edit, go to Preferences, and in the style here, change it to the classic version. Apply that, and say OK to that. So um, so there's there's the classic version, or there's another version as well. Um, is a legacy one. You apply that one. This is the one I prefer because you can see the icons it's quite clearly. Um, really straightforward. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to add a router now. Um, so, if we just look at the um, the software, so there's that's where my file is at the moment. It's in my um, a USB stick. Um, so we're going to point GNS3 to look at this file. Okay, so um, so what we need to do is go into the um, the GNS3 and then under Edit, you go into Preferences, um, and then on the Dynamips, you use the iOS routers. So this is where you build your different types of routers. So it's not just the 7200, but you can add other routers as well. So you click on New, and then you browse to the image. Um, so there's my 7200. Oh, it's in, it's in a different folder at the moment, so let's just uh, bring that back again. Um, so 
So it's in the um, in the J drive. So you click on that and you say open, and it takes a minute. So it says, right, would you like to decompress this image? You should say yes to this. When it says what what it does is it's um, the the image that you receive from Cisco is basically it's a compressed version and it has to be decompressed. So when a router boots up. Uh, initially the whole image is decompressed um, and and that's how it runs but if you don't decompress it then it takes a lot longer to boot up your router when you when you get it set up so you should always say yes to that and then it sticks that on there basically go next again so it automatically recognizes the 7200 um, you can add different images like 2600 3725 3600 all sorts um, you know it's up to you whichever image you can get hold of so this is recognized that it's a 7200 platform um, so you can have all of these other platforms so 1700 2600 whichever one you want you can you can as long as you get the iOS for it um, and then it creates a name so you can change that name to whatever you want but it makes sense to leave it as 7200 you click on next um, the default RAM I'd leave that as, as default again so it needs that, that amount click on that now this is where you can add all your adapters so at the moment it's just chosen a single fast Ethernet interface I'll go for a two fast Ethernet and you can put uh, serial interfaces put four four serial interfaces on that uh, and you know you can you can just add to whatever you want to do on here so you can put eight serials another four Ethernet ports if you want to entirely up to you but as long as just just as long as it meets your requirements so you click on next um, idle PC it's really really important that you set the idle PC um, but I don't like to do it from here because it, it somehow it doesn't come back with the right image now um, we, if you don't set your idle PC what you'll find is that your uh, CPU just shoots up to over a hundred percent when you boot up that router um, so and it, it really just makes your whole lab useless so you must 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 set your idle PC but as I said I will do this but I'll do that once I boot up the router not not from here and then so we just click on finish and it's added the router on there right so uh, we click on apply it's okay now if you click on the router you see that your 7200 has already come up there so you bring the 7200 in and then it thinks about it. now it's in the, the red means that it hasn't been started yet so what you need to do is start the the, the router so if you click on right click on that and you click on that start and it goes green you can also start it from here this button here is quite useful so you can start your devices from there um, so once that's started you can console into it so you can either do a right click and console or you got this little console button here and there you go the, the root is booting up as you can see that booted up really quickly that's because we've decompressed the image already uh, and as you can see show IP interface brief it's got all those interfaces that we put on there so you got the two fast Ethernet we put the four serial interfaces and then we put a four port Ethernet card on there as well um, so so now that's booted up um, what you guys will find is that if you look at your task manager and your CPU performance that's knocking up to 30% already now I've got an Intel Core i7 processor with 16 gig of RAM uh, so it's a powerful processor so it's you know it, f even for a powerful processor it's already going quite high up um, so this is where you start need to if you had two or three routers in here that would be knocking up to a good hundred percent straight away so what you need to do is set your idle PC so you do a right click on the on the on the router so there's your router do a right click on that and you do the idle PC value so it goes off and starts searching for a value now you have to wait for it to come back sometimes you you might have to do this two or three times but um, you just wait for that to come back and then there you go so it's come back with some values so it says potentially better idle PCs values are marked with a star so you must find there you go so there's one here with a star so that's the better value to set the idle PC if you don't get a star you might have to do that a couple of times and if, if it doesn't do it a couple of times you might want to shut down the GNS3 and restart it again and then do the idle PC again but it's really important once you once you do the idle PC you click on apply and say okay so it's now got it set if you look at your your CPU look at that it's dropped right down to 3% so as you can imagine if you had three or four routers in here you, your, your CPU would be going sky high. So if we just add another router, there's router two, and um, 
and what we'll do is we'll join them up using Ethernet link. So we click on the link button, click on that, fast Ethernet to fast Ethernet, and that. So just need to give this guy a start as well. So just make it click the green button. So he started both of those, um, and that's it. We can so we've got the console on this one, and then you can console into this one as well. And this one's just booting up, almost there. So there we go. So so router one and router two both working now, and they both got fast Ethernet zero zero connected. So if we just do a quick conf t interface fast Ethernet zero slash zero, IP address ten dot one dot one dot one. Do a no shut on that, and then we do router two. N dot one dot one dot two. Okay. Now we should be able to ping each other. And there we go. So you've got two routers now working on that um, on your network. And that's it. So that's basically it. Really simple, straightforward, and you can you can add as many routers as you like to your network um, you've got serial connections so you can you can join them up using serial connections so if you go serial serial one zero to serial one zero so now you've got a serial connection um, let's just make that a little bit neater but it's up to you so you can you can add whatever you like so it's a really powerful useful tool for practicing your CCNA, CCMP, CCIE all sorts of stuff so people use it all the time for whatever you, your requirements are thank you very much for listening i hope you found that useful if you've got any questions just please ask no problems at all thanks a lot